Okay, so I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Um, I've been holding on to this information for years and just too intimidated to share the information because when I found out about it, I went into kind of like this cognitive dissonance and didn't want to believe that it was true. But we're, we're moving into a new age where this information um, I was told needs to be shared and for us to move forward we have to kind of know our past. So as most of you know we live in an inverted reality. So what is seen as good really isn't that great and what has been demonized or seen as bad is not really the way it has been portrayed. So if you haven't heard about the Anunnaki, this is what I'm going to get into. So the Anunnaki would be our parent race. So in the Bible, this would be referred to these beings as the Elohim. And in the Bible, Elohim is plural, and it's saying, let us make them in our image. So a lot of the origin stories in the Bible is taken from Sumerian tablets about the Anunnaki and that whole story with their own little twist on it. We're so exposed and indoctrinated in organized religion, even if you don't consider yourself, you know, one of the Abrahamic religions, it, it so has saturated our collective consciousness that we take on certain belief systems that come from these organized religions. Even our creation story, how, you know, we're just like made by God and, and we evolved on our own. So if you can hang in to what I'm about to talk about and not just go into just shutting it down and go into denial and all that kind of stuff. This has been years of me accepting this and, um, and it's not just because I read it in a book or just did some research and came up with this on my own. I did supplement some knowledge that way, but initially it was because I had interactions with these beings that actually are our human creators. So if you haven't heard of the Anunnaki, they would have been seen as the gods in Sumeria. The knowledge of them has been kept on cuneiform tablets all the ancient literature and even the Bible are referring to these beings, okay? So these beings are the ones who actually created us. They would be our parents, if you wanna look at it that way. They assisted in terraforming the earth. There was already hominids here and they jump-started us in evolution. It would have taken us a lot longer to get where we are now if they didn't. They did have a purpose for doing it, and that's what people have issues with, but they also assisted in our evolution. And yes, they did need workers to help terraform the earth. So a lot of what is out there about the Anunnaki is not true. They've been demonized. And <clears throat> I could go on and on about all the information and the literature and everything, but I have a playlist. I'll link it down below, or you can go to my playlist tab and it has all the videos people have already made that are pretty accurate. There may be a couple things that, that I'm not sure about. Um, I do have additional information on my own only because I've had interactions with them personally. So when you watch that playlist, you may go into that cognitive dissonance and not want to believe it because um, it really goes against our indoctrination even if you weren't indoctrinated with an organized religion again remember we have taken on a lot of the organized religions belief systems so the playlist is called hidden human origins this is what we hear about the war in heaven and this was a battle between two factions of the anunnaki okay and so there was the serpent faction which supported humanity and there was the eagle faction that wanted to just like wipe us out and so the God in the Bible is the leader of the eagles. And that's why the God in the Old Testament is 
angry, jealous, you will have no other gods before me, and it's because he knew there was other gods. It would be other Anunnaki, and he wanted to be the controlling factor and was very angry with humans and thought we were just these beasts, and he was the one that came in and tried to kill, you know, off humans with the flood. And this is where we got get that, you know, God fearing. And it's, it never made sense to me. It's like, why would you fear God? If God's like this all loving being, why would you fear it? So this is this Enlil character. This is that faction of the Anunnaki. And this is what the Abrahamic religions, this is the God that they worship. And this is why organized religions are all about control and manipulation and trying to control our consciousness and things like that. Very corrupt. And then there was the other faction of Anunnaki, which had a different leader, which is, he's called Enki, okay? And this is the serpent symbolism. And this is what has been demonized in the Bible because they do not want you to follow the teachings of the serpent. The serpent religion was all about freedom and Enki actually was the one that created humans. He was the master geneticist that upgraded us. And he had a love for humanity. And what actually angered the other faction is because when Enki upgraded us, or uh, whatever you want to call it, um, he put in this serpent energy, which we know as kundalini energy. And that we had the ability to awaken it inside of us. And that we could be these human, these hominids on earth and then and recognize that we are these divine beings. So this is the story of the serpent in the Garden of Eden that has been demonized. But it was actually, this serpent was actually encouraging Eve to take a bite of the red apple. And after that, you will have the knowledge that there is good and evil on this earth. This is the same thing as taking the red pill. She awoken, not just naively walking through this earth as robots and, and believing everything and being manipulated and all that kind of stuff. She was awakened to realize that there was this good and evil aspect going on. There was this manipulation of Enlil and, and everything. And she, therefore gave that knowledge to Adam. And in the past, uh, enlightenment and knowledge and wisdom always came through the woman. And that's why it was portrayed that way. But again, demonize the woman, demonize the serpent. And the serpent wanted her to awaken to the knowledge of everything. And it's no coincidence that it's a red apple or a red pomegranate. Um, and now we call it red pilling. Okay, so it's the same thing. Of course, the organized religions are going to try to demonize it all. This would also be the pagan religion, um, going back to seeing everything in an animistic viewpoint and not being controlled and manipulated by outside sources and organized religions. So remember, even Jesus in the Bible said to be wise as serpents. And Jesus and Mary Magdalene and their whole lineage were actually of this Anunnaki bloodline. And this is why he would go into the churches or the temples and overturn the money changers. He saw what was happening and the manipulation and that it was becoming a business and it was all about state control and all that kind of stuff. Jesus was a rebel. Jesus would have been a, a serpent mindset. He would have been more considered like a, a druid um, or a pagan. They have extremely manipulated his teachings and turned it into a religion. And the reason that they killed him is because he was of this other belief system and self-empowerment and how to awaken this divinity inside of you. And the church didn't want his message to get out there. And that is why they attempted to kill him. I was shown he what he didn't die. That's for another video. So wherever you see civilizations that have the serpent symbology, 
knew this information, followed that type of belief system. I even saw like a short of a Catholic priest talking about not doing yoga. And he talks about kundalini and that that's a serpent and you don't want to awaken the serpent. It goes against God's teachings. But remember, God is, the, is in, the, in their Bible is Enlil. And this kundalini energy, this serpent that is at the base of your spine, this is your salvation. This is you want to wake it up. You want it to clear all those false belief systems and insecurities and everything like that. But again, you don't have to do yoga to awaken it, okay? And at this time, there's the energy that's coming in is actually trying to assist awakening this kundalini energy. This is what the ley lines and the nodes awakening again are doing. But if you don't know what's going on, you're gonna feel like you're going crazy. I wanna to touch too on why this information is like, there, it's no coincidence that, that the Nag Hammadi scriptures were found. Nag Hammadi means snake teachings. Um, and people are getting more into deciphering the Sumerian tablets. Um, there's more and more information coming up and it's because we are in this time now of a transition to a new Aeon. And the new energy will be this Enki energy this serpent energy. And we're gonna go back to not being under organized religion and brainwashing and everything. And we're gonna go back to a more animistic view of Earth and the universe. And, and I do believe because I have been through some activations of these sacred sites or these nodes, and I believe that they were constructed for those times, but they were constructed in stone and everything because they can last for thousands of years. And this is why they built them the way they did and out of the material they did. I believe they did it for this future generation that we are in now, okay? Because I got hit with all this energy and I was nauseous and I was on the floor and I was like, what's going on? And it was telling me that these sacred sites are being activated again and why it had to run through my body I don't know, maybe because I have some type of karmic tie to these, these sacred sites. Um, but these sites are becoming very, very activated again. The ley lines are very activated again. And if you are on Patreon, you know that we are going out and working on these ley lines and these nodes. We're feeding a different energy into it because the organized religions have squatted on top of these nodes and fed a different energy into these ley lines. They built their churches and temples on pyramids and sacred sites because they know that they had an effect on the earth. And now it makes sense why I had so many interactions. If you've watched my video about how I see holograms, I had months and months of these Mayan holograms. And when I first went to Mexico, I, I put my feet on the ground and I was like, this is home. And then, then you see how much symbolism is in that country and even Central and South America around the serpent and Quetzalcoatl. And, and so this serpent energy and this serpent wisdom is still there. And that's why I have such this love for those countries is because it, was, it wasn't super active, but a lot of people still had a, an affinity for Quetzalcoatl and the sites were not, you know, torn down like a lot of other places. Um, they do have some churches that did, yeah, build on top of pyramids, but there was a lot that, that wasn't built upon. And so all this serpent knowledge is, is coming back. When you watch the playlist, don't go into fear or anything like that because in 2016, all my clairs are turned on. So I just um, had this um, being telling me um, Enki is coming, Enki is coming. So again, I don't know if that means physically incarnating, I've talked about this before, or if it's just this consciousness coming back and there's a lot of us going to embody this consciousness and walk around and, and do things with this consciousness. And then they said fulcrum, which we went past the tipping point where <clears throat> there's no going back. And there was a big struggle. I had a lot of 
Um, a lot of us work in the astral realm or um, beings coming to us, kind of trying us that we're doing it. We were kind of getting, I don't know, psychically attacked. And 2016 was a very, very hard year for a lot of us that were aware of what was going on. And there was a lot of like interdimensional battles going on. It was a very, very tough year. Sometimes I can't believe I survived it. But we've gone past that point now. And I'm not saying it's totally cleared up, but um, a lot of it has cleared up. We're on our way. There's no, there's no stopping this serpent energy or this Enki energy, this liberation of humanity. There's no stopping it, okay? And I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. It's going to take several generations. Um, but, and that doesn't mean that humans that are under the spell of Enlil and organized religion and these top 1% people, they worship this Enlil. And this is why they have the same agenda as this Enlil character. They want to depopulate. They, these 1% people, they hate humanity, right? And they want to manipulate and they want to control and they want to keep us sick and they are just all about power and things like that. This is very much the Enlil mentality. Maybe they started following him because they were afraid. And sometimes when you're afraid that someone's going to hurt you or injure you, you just are just like, oh, and you praise him and you're like, no. And they worship him because they're afraid of him. And so this is why it makes sense when people say they're God-fearing. They're going to do what they're told because they don't want to be punished in some way. And so this is a lot of organized religion, that they'll go to hell if they don't do what they're told by God in the Bible. Okay, so this is very fear-based intimidation, and this is what we're leaving. So how I even started researching and, and knowing about this story of our creators, and they can never leave us. They have extreme karma with us because they did interfere with our evolution. Okay, and so they have karmic ties and no matter what they always will have to watch over humanity and take us into the golden age until we realize who we really are we've awakened our serpent kundalini energy and and this is what gets us off the wheel of reincarnation okay this is the goal of enki and the serpent energy is to get off that wheel and keep ascending so how I found out about it, if you've watched my video of my pre-birth memory of where I was told my main mission here is to help heal the feminine energy that was cut off through organized religion. In organized religion, there's no female creator. It was all male. And, and as we know, males cannot give birth. Males cannot um, create on their own without feminine energy. And in the past, the universe and earth was feminine, that the feminine gave birth. And that's not meaning that the masculine has nothing to do with it. Of course, the masculine does. But the ultimate birth and creation of everything goes through the feminine. And this is why the feminine in the serpent wisdom and everything was, was respected and honored. And this is where we get, you know, the goddess and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going back to. It's not that the feminine energy is going to come in and surpass it and we're going to be this like suppressing the masculine. It's not that we're balancing it out. Both energies are active in the universe. And we've been manipulated to think God is male and we're very left brain dominant, which is masculinity. And I love masculine energy. I'm not a feminist, so don't think that. Um, but we do have to balance the two out. And so that's what's happening right now. That's why we're seeing such polarities going on. It's also the agenda behind some of the movements right now, trying to kind of suppress that, that feminine energy that's coming in. And then I was told that besides that feminine energy, I was to help others who are in avatar bodies. So that would be all of us. <laughs> and why they call them avatar bodies, I don't know. That's, that's just what they referred to it as. So the beings I was talking to was a council of these Anunnaki beings. They are totally human looking. They are in a different density, but this is the council I was in front of. So I knew back then that the information about the Anunnaki, of course, was has been demonized. And of course, there was this serpent eagle kind of faction going on. And this is also why I never felt fell for organized religion 
And I knew right away that the serpent had been demonized and that it was actually that story was about us waking up to what's going on. And you know when you get red pilled or you awaken that you you realize that oh my gosh, this is how, I was very angry when the, when I awoke and realized that we've been lied to and manipulated and that, and this is you figuring out and waking up to that there is good and evil in this world. Okay? It's the same thing. It's just you waking up. That's what the serpent was doing with Eve. I knew the council was was something positive and that 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 it was I was here here to heal and assist others. So there's no way that that these beings were cruel or or nefarious in any way. And then I had another experience where I was taken and I was having uh, procedures done on me, which I talk about a lot, and talking about the Rh negative factor. And so the Anunnaki did eventually leave this dimension, but they did leave beings that had more of the Anunnaki blood, that their kundalini, their serpent energy was awakened, and they would be left as like guides for the hominids or the humans that were here that didn't have the awakened kundalini energy yet. This would be more of what I talked about with Jesus, what he was more of like following a druid path and using the earth energy and, and being more of like magical, how he could heal people with his hands, he could turn water into wine, he practiced necromancy, you know, he can bring people back to life. And this would be in the future demonized as witchcraft, okay? He was more of a shaman. If he would have been born in the 16, 1700s during the Inquisition, he would have been burned as a witch for sure. The things that he did, levitated, walking on water and all that, that would have been considered witchcraft. So in the Bible too, if you go back to the Aramaic language and all that translated, uh, you know, we see in the Bible that he was a carpenter because it involved the word craft. And so they think, oh, if he crafted things, he must have been like making things out of wood or whatever. But actually the actual translation of the word was he was a master of the craft which call it what you want <laughs> uh, the craft back then would have been these magical things okay so he was of the Anunnaki blood he was uh, would have been considered married to Mary Magdalene she was also like a priestess of Isis she would have also known the craft they would have practiced sacred sexuality to um, activate each other in the beginning and it's a whole another separate video so he would have been of this Anunnaki bloodline so people that have RH negative blood it's of this Anunnaki blood from the beings that were left here as guides that had a little bit more Anunnaki blood in them okay and that doesn't mean that people with RH negative blood cannot get corrupted they can. It doesn't mean you're automatically going to be awakened, but we have more of a propensity to be awakened. And sometimes it's awakened for you from the Anunnaki in the other world. That's what happened to me. Okay. And I didn't understand what was going on at the time. And if you've heard my story, but they actually came through and activated me and awakened me. And then I had the experience in front of the council and everything. But remember, when we incarnate, we have total amnesia. And so slowly, I had to follow the breadcrumbs and know what was going on. And again, RH negative blood has been demonized. Um, anything like reptilian has been demonized. But it's still the demonization of the serpent. And anything that has to do with serpents and dragons and all that kind of stuff has been demonized but it was always the wisdom teachings, okay? And they're all coming back. Okay, so again, I suggest you watch the playlist um, of our Hidden Human Origins. It's hours and hours of videos um, by Matthew LaCroix. He's done a really good job interpreting the cuneiform tablets and um, everything like that. And so I would, you know, t watch a video, kind of digest it, and then maybe watch another video and try to digest it. 
that's how it is when, when I get new information and it makes me really uncomfortable. I know that it's just going to take me a couple days. I just need to process it and digest it. And um, this has been happening since I had my awakening in 2009 when I was activated. So it's hard. You, you think when you're awakened that you, that you know everything and then that gets blown out of the water and some new information comes in. So this is part of awakening, and this is why I tell people it's not an easy path. It's, again, not like New Age where everything is just so blissful and happy. You do have those moments, but it's a lot of these truths coming in that make you uncomfortable. But we are going into a time now where we have to know our past and the truths about the past because it's been so inverted and manipulated. And then we can keep moving forward. Okay, so... So it's important, I've been told, that, that to share this information. I've been sitting on this for, for years. I know some of you will resonate with the information, and there may be others that will just go into complete denial and dissonance and unfollow me and all that kind of stuff. But, and that's okay. Um, and then you may come back and after it's digested a little bit. But, but in order for us to move forward as humanity, we have to know that this has happened and that this new energy is coming in. And remember, we're leaving the dark ages of the Enlil control. We're leaving it. So at least take comfort in that. It's still going to be a bumpy road because we have to deprogram. And um, the, sudden, you know, the slow breakdown of organized religions and this top 1% that's, you know, worshipping the, the eagle and Enlil. And, you know, so it's going to be generations and um, we'll get there, all right? So that's it for today's video, and I'll be going deeper into the subject we already have on Patreon about the Anunnaki, um, but I'm sure we'll be talking about it more. So if you want more information about that, you can join our Patreon community. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.